let's create this kind of weapon grip there are different ways we can start making it but what I like to do is start with curve put down to the knobs and breakpoints and let's start to lay down this curve right where the curvature starts on the weapon grip in here we can make it a little bit more bigger spaces between the points but this is the real real place where we want to make it right so something like that maybe a little bit more to the like that so this looks pretty good for now now what we want to do is just alt click and duplicate it and now the second one we want to place right at the end make sure to capture this kind of curvature so okay so this looks fine here you can't really tell what this might be part of the the guard so you know, this looks fine so now we have the left side for the right side First, let's count how many points we have on the curve. One, so just select it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's, let's duplicate this curve. Then we start selected. And we want to create three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, we have done. Let's just created the curve with the same amount of points which is going to be very important when we are going to try to bridge these curves together so now let's duplicate it again and move it to the start of the curvature for the grip like that So, this looks good. And for the actual thickness of the weapon part, we can do this like that. So, let's select the left side. Let's duplicate the, this, the, this part and let's select it and put down the edit mode and we want to move it to the side so maybe something like 0 0.15 and then select these three and merge them together so with what we have done it's actually given some thickness so when we are going to skin this part it's going to get the roundness of this of this weapon so we can do the same thing in here we can just de duplicate this edit node then duplicate the curve we want to make pipe this in let's just select these and also merge them like that just as a look at the end result we can also merge these together you can see we are getting this end result but what, what I'd like to do is actually do this both sides individually. So let's go to this. Let's put down the skin modifier and take a look. You can see that it's actually the other way around. What you can do is just go to the skin modifier and press on 
select the view cross section and do it by hand just selecting manually the order you want to skim this these curves so copy that and now we can do the same thing in here but also you can see that it's actually the wrong wrong way so just do it again like that actually you can see that it's reversed so you can just do like that so now we want to bridge these both parts with that just merge them together and put down convert node this node is actually going to create the polygons that we can manipulate. Right now it's a little bit too much of a geometry, so let's go down. Maybe like something like this. Something like that. And now I want to make sure that when you bridge them they are actually the same amount of edges. So what I like to do put down the polydraw which is very useful node so let's go into the edge selection mode hold down A to select the whole loop press on the edge this is going to extrude the whole edge so put it something like that and then shift delete to drop the selection go to the point vertex selection and something like that and now we have to make sure that we use the same amount of points to make this top selection on both sides so these can so that this can bridge very nicely so what I am thinking we will be fine with something like something like four polygons on top like that so just a little bit of cleanup and in here go to the same extrude them Put it down, drop the selection, go to the vertex. One, two, three, and four. So, what we have done is if you take a look at the selection, we have 13 edges. Well, let's make this like that. And we said we have actually we don't have 13 edges. Actually, we have three. Oh, my bad. So, something like that. I thought this is the two edges, so my bad. So, in here, we also have now 13 edges. This ensures we, we will have a very nice bridge. And we can actually bridge from the from this node also. Just select these. And in the tooltip, you actually see that Z is for the bridge selection. So basically, select this, select this, and press Z. Now we have bridge selection with the quad. The only problem with this, but but we can actually make sure that it can be fine. We are actually going to voxelize this mesh so we can create all of these little details something like this and this something like that and cut out this so one other thing I wanted to add is if you look at the reference image you can see that this is <coughs> this kind of creasing around the around the trigger so what I did is just go into the poly draw mode node I just made these edges a little bit more closer to each other so that when we subdivide it you can actually this you can see this 
very subtle creasing around the edge of it, so like that. And also, what's very useful in this node is also that you can use the smooth function to even out this selection, something like this, so that they are equal, and if some parts are not very round, you can just smooth out the, to equalize the polygons. But for now, this is going to be our starting mesh, so we do not want to subdivide it for now, so let's go back one top and mirror it. Go to the this point, mirror it right at the so first of all I'm gonna go back to the poly draw and actually straighten out this selection. So go into the poly draw like this and shift S so now it's actually straight and before that actually I want to go back to the also pull draw again and it's like this and extrude it so that we don't do not get this weird topology when we are going to subdivide it so something like this and now with this topology, you want to create this. We can do that with a couple of ways. Let's poly bridge this. That's a little bit too much. With something like two. And then we want to cap these. All of these. Put down the polyfill. And we can use the single polygon, like that. And with single polygon selected, we can select these. Convert this selection to the boundary edges. Maybe also select these and bevel them. like that. So, and now let's just put down subdivide. And now we have this shape. And we have preserved this kind of creasing. This is the one way we can do it. And another way we can do this is by using the quadrimesher from Exocide which for now is you can use it for free if you download this side effects lab tools kit so with that we can just very easily very quickly create the closed out geometry like that so let's make it like this so we have two ways we can do this and with that Let's select the other one. Oh my god, I can't click on buttons anymore. Holy bridge. To the zero. Like that. And make sure you create the poly groups. So go back to the bridge. Enable mesh group. And go to the this and enable mesh group and make it two. So they don't do not override each other. Like that. Then put down the remesher. Let's make it symmetrize it and it's a little bit too much of a geometry. This looks now this is much better. And also make sure you do use the use primitive group boundaries. So we eliminate any weird kind. So this is why we created these mesh groups, so that the mesher knows where the boundaries are and that creates 
we are looking geometry so subdivided let's put it on two but you can see that some of the details are actually lost here so after the remesher let's just go and put down the polydraw node we can just go to the vertex mode and before we subdivide it any further just create this crease like that And we also, if we have made too much of a creasing, just go to the relax node, relax option here in the poly draw, like that. So, and before we subdivide it, we want to crease these also. So, do that there. Now they are a little bit too much of a round, too round. So, go here. And select, select by normal. Just like these. And now, with the right click, select the boundaries, and select also maybe these two, also like that. Then just poly bevel, like that. And now we subdivide. We are guessing basically the same result. So we can actually just let's transform it. Oh, to make sure that to make a compartment just for fun. You see, we are getting basically the same results two different methods the exoset quadrant measure is kind of it is a little bit easier but when we creating these kind of details we will gonna lose some of these some of them so just be careful if you don't even need that kind of detail if you can use it quadrant measure is actually a very nice tool to have so up to so now let's do the next part